Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, so today, today we are going to talk about one of the most interesting articles I've read uh, recently uh, and that is Coptagon and what that is. Now, you also see it from the title, I'm assuming, I don't know what title this video will have but you always um, see the title first so if you have decided to join me let's start so I guess that uh, a good introduction here would be that the drugs have always been used and the drugs have been used for different purposes in history but today we are going to focus specifically on drugs that have been used by terrorists or by soldiers um, to get certain effects, effects such as, you know, um, uh, stimulating effects. Uh, so in other words, um, dr a drug or a bunch of them uh, that were used to um, uh, avoid the feeling of tiredness or fatigue, um, to stay up uh, for like 48 hours or 4 days, you know, um, and so on and so forth. So drugs that might um, inhibit the sense of fear uh, and might make us um, more savage in our actions um, but also more awake uh, get some sort of different lucidity uh, from reality so let's start nowadays one of the most um, used ones um, is um, Captagon and that has been defined as the the drug of the jihad. It is based of phenethylin, a compound of amphetamine and other stimulating substances that has been widespread in the Gulf countries for decades and now it is um, widespread among those who fight the holy war. Now, uh, what are exactly the effects of this drug? Of course, there's a loss of judgment, uh, resistance to fatigue, euphoria, abandonment of all inhibitions. Um, certainly, um, those are tablets that are sell for 5 to 20 edos. And those who take them may not eat or sleep for days. And they are pervaded by this sense of omnipotence that makes them feel invincible. Also, syringes with traces of captagon can be injected. Captagon was also found um, in the home of one of the Paris bombers. And um, the same drug was also in the blood of one of the terrorists from Sus um, in Tunisia. But uh, uh, the one between wars and drugs is an association that has recurred several times in history and in the dark years of the last century. For example, so the first example we have is uh, the Nazi period. Hitler's soldiers made extensive use of amphetamines. So um, on May 14th, 1940, after only four days, the troops of the Nazi army conquered Holland and their ability to fight non-stop day and night without sleep was decisive. And according to Norman Holler's uh, recent essay, uh, which is called The Total Euphoria, this resistance was guaranteed by perverting. This is a military valuable drug uh, regularly used by General Rommel and by Hitler himself. And by the way, um, perverting or substances like uh, Coptagon um, were like candies, right? The doping pill was developed in 1937 by Dr. Fritz um, Oschild and uh, he was struck by the extraordinary effects of benzodrines on American athletes who participated in the Berlin Olympics in 1936. At the beginning of the Second World War, it was distributed to the soldiers by military doctors. According to Der Spiegel, more than 35 million 3 mg doses of pervertin were packaged um, for the German ground in air forces between April and July 1940. We are talking about 35 million doses. 
For their massive use on German and Austrian tanks, the perverting tablets were nicknamed chocolate for tanks. Between 1939 and 1945, the Japanese army used methamphetamines, which in the past war period would have paid dearly for the effects of the abuse of these substances. A benzodrine inhaler, the trade name for an amphetamine mix used by Allied pilots during World War II. Um, the British bought 72 million packs, the Americans 250 million. Even the Allies used it to endure grueling fight sessions. The Americans also used them for a psychological reason. They did not want their pilots to feel disadvantaged compared to the Germans. However, the use of amphetamines was not painless. The Allied pilots accused side effects such as strong irritability and inability to channel concentration. Many, many soldiers became addicted to these substances and continued to abuse them even when the war was over. Another episode in which um, the drug was used was during the Vietnam conflict. Uh, the abuse of heroin, marijuana and other drugs became so common among American soldiers that 10 to 15 percent of them developed some form of addiction and President Nixon was forced to finance the first major expansion of addiction treatment programs. The list um, of the drugs, um, similar to Coptogen, continues to the present day. A stimulant drug created to treat narcolepsy and placed on the forbidden list of doping substances, which is called modafinil, um, is currently being tested on soldiers of various nationalities to extend the number of waking hours of the troops. So they want to bring the level of hours, the amount of hours, up to 48 hours without sleep. Um, it was also given to US Air Force pilots in 2003 during the invasion of Iraq. And um, there basically something happened. And specifically, we are referring to the Tarnak Farm accident in 2002 when the pilot of an American F-16, perhaps under amphetamines, killed four Canadian soldiers with friendly fire. But naturally, we have to think that this is not just like a modern invention. I mean, modernity here is involved and also quite a lot um, because of uh, the chemical compounds that uh, can be created in laboratories. Um, but they can be, uh, you know, just uh, a very modern um, solution um, uh, or very modern um, um, idea. It might be only a modern technology. In what sense? In the sense that even uh, Roman and ancient Greek soldiers, before going to war, they weren't like exactly that lucid. They weren't drunk either, but they were at least tipsy. Um, that is because some level of alcohol in the blood can inhibit fear and can um, let them endure some more pain. So the idea for Greeks and Romans, Romans a little less, but definitely Greeks um, uh, versus Macedonians also, right? Because Macedonians had none of that. They were uh, barbaric in a sense. They would drink pure wine. Um, but ancient Greek soldiers, they had this um, habit, this um, habit of, of theirs, which was to mix wine with uh, water. Um, so we might think that also Vikings, um, and specifically uh, Viking soldiers known as Berserkir, um, might have been under the influence of some sort of drug. Um, they were certainly um, devoted to their uh, god of war, um, Odinus, but they might have been using some of the drugs about which, unfortunately, we do not know enough. Um, we want to make a third example. Third example known as um, the group um, that fought against uh, crusaders. Um, 
and we're talking about the 1200s um, and this sect was known as Ash Shashin um, which probably um, means um, devoted, dedicated to Ashish um, of course here it's interesting right how uh, a different combination of tracks um, it is required right so it's interesting to see how we would need a different combination of drugs because on the one hand we need the drugs to stimulate us right and on the other hand we do need the drugs um, that chill us you know like uh, that uh, can bring um, lower um, the level of um, anxiety or the level of um, excitement for lacking of a better word um, that the first uh, drugs produce in us um, yet we talked about uh, Vikings we talked about um, um, the group the medieval group known as Ash Shashin um, we're gonna talk now about Incas right and they were certainly using um, coca leaves um, more than two centuries ago um, they were um, chewing um, coca um, uh, leaves right which exactly does um, a watered down which exactly is kind of a watered down version I guess if we can call it like that of cooking nowadays and so also uh, Prussian soldiers our Prussian soldiers they were into cocaine right they uh, took a lot of cocaine to um, endure their battles right and also let's imagine uh, objectively that the uh, full consequences of those drugs were not known right so all the side effects all the addiction but also um, what exactly that um, uh, can cause to an individual was pretty much unknown um, and it wasn't known until the 60s right so definitely Prussian soldiers um, were using it to get to the uh, immediate effects that those drugs might have anyway there is one more drug that definitely deserves here a place in this video and that is morphine um, morphine has been used um, since the 18th century um, to cure wounds um, especially those um, produced by a uh, firearm and it became unfortunately to be known as the soldier disease as many many soldiers became addicted to morphine and uh, nowadays we still use drugs because uh, I guess that uh, the health of our soldiers um, um, is of minor concern uh, in comparison to what could be winning the war or winning the whatever strategy we're talking about anyway um, I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you liked the video if so please don't forget to leave a like comment below let us know your thoughts don't forget to subscribe and um, to hit the notification bell so you can receive every every update um, of this channel we'll talk some more next time bye